Hey all, Russ here, RV or TV. Welcome. Check it out. We're in Ohio. We're just off I-75. Okay, here it is. The brand new window. It is installed. Took almost three weeks to get that. A rock hit it. Put me out of commission. Big shout out to everyone up in uh, Escada, Michigan, right on Lake Huron. I spent three weeks there, got to know everyone. Mike and Levi at Transglass, all the folks at the KOA up there really treated me like family. But uh, it's time to get back on the road. Well, let's hop in. We'll get going here. Okay, well, we're getting close to Dayton, Ohio. There's a couple museums that were on the list, the original list to see. So we're going to take a little time today, stop here in Dayton, but we're heading down to the Ohio River. Going to cross over into West Virginia and try to follow the Ohio River. Heading west. Yeah, that window of all windows to break was a custom built window for Mercedes and uh, the company, the manufacturer, they're, they're out of California. So it took several slow trucks <laughs> to get that window shipped out here. It was incredible to wait, but what can you do? I could have. Uh, did things differently now that I went through it, but oh well, might have saved a few days. So it did mess up quite a bit of my travel plans I had for uh, August and early September, but we're going to make up a little time and keep on trucking. That's all we can do. What do you say? Let's do it. Picture perfect weather, nice and green. Dayton, Ohio, it's on the western side of Ohio, kind of flat land, no mountains here. Huge manufacturing town. They got a couple museums that I really wanted to check. So I thought this is a pretty good route. The goal is to get down by tomorrow to West Virginia. Then we're gonna start trucking west. Just uh, right along the top part of West Virginia, into Kentucky, hopefully into Missouri, Arkansas, I don't know, whatever we can. I do have a huge YouTube conference the very first week of October, so that's the goal. That's still on the schedule, too, so making up a little lost time, that's okay. And this is our beer TV. We'll find something, huh? So all I can say is sit back, enjoy the ride, and let's get exploring. I took all interstate all the way out of Michigan. Just pick up time this I-75. And there is a million trucks on this road. They got a lot of rest areas, too. You know, this highway goes all the way down to Florida. Busy, busy road. Speaking of Michigan, I shot a lot of video up there. Even though I was uh, shut down, I got quite a bit done. But I did not get it edited. You'll be seeing all the Michigan videos here uh, in October and November. Plus, there's other content. Uh, Nebraska, that'll be coming up later this year, too. 
So, plenty of RV or TV in the future. Looks like we're getting into Dayton here. This is one big manufacturing place. Chances are there's some type of product. You know, I think, what is it, cash registers, um, refrigerators. I think everything's made here. <laughs> But we're going to go see the museum. Not only about manufacturing, it also has the Wright Brothers. One of their original planes are in there. We're going to see that too. Downtown, Dayton, all the high rises. People driving past me here. <laughs> I take the slow lane. I'm gonna cross over a river. That park, by the time we get there, it should be just opening up if I have this timed out correctly. Uh, Highway 35, that's how we'll be leaving later in the day. But wait, there's more. There's a second museum. There's also the Air Force National Museum here. 20 acres under roof. So if we have enough time when we get done with this one up here, well, we're going to hit the second one. Feels good to be back on the road. My goodness, I thought I was never going to get out of that town. I better pay attention. We're getting close to where I got to exit. And it's not that one. It'll be the next exit coming up. This place is called Carillon. Carolyn? Carillon, I think. Park. There it is over there to the right. Should be our exit. Oh no! Exit closed. Oh man. Okay, plan B. <laughs> Let me figure this out. Look at this, they closed the exit. I gotta get turned around. Well, it wasn't too bad. I had to go down to the next exit, which is like three miles, and just double back. So, anyway, here we are. Carillon Park. That's what it's called. There's a river right there. Tons of history in Dayton. This goes way back. All of Ohio, all this area. A lot of this stuff dates back into the 1700s even. Okay, we should be making a right here. I'm cheating, I got the phone. <laughs> Phones tell me which way to go. There's their towers, those are chimes up there. Should be the park off to the right. All right, made it. Here's our first stop back on the road again. Carillon Park. It's supposed to be uh, like an old village, old buildings. And all the Wright Brothers stuff. Wow, nice flower garden, huh? And we should be getting here just in time for them to open up. Got an early start. Want to get as much sightseeing in as we can, plus driving. Wow, this place is nice. All right, we're in 
twelve dollars to come in here they give you a map there's guides if you want it there's a cash register right there Carillon Historical Park. Wow. They got some bucks in this, huh? Well, Dayton. You know, you read about a bunch of this stuff, but you... Did. Whoa! Look at the bike. Wow. About a gold-plated bike. That must be part of the Wright Brothers stuff. Well, I'm not sure where to start, so we'll just keep wandering. <laughs> There's Wright Brother Pictures. Oh, look, that's part of the old wing. Well, I read that that plane that they have on display here, hopefully we'll find it, is one of, it's supposed to be parts of the original, whatever you want. Aircraft. According to map, there's a straight ahead. We'll go in there first. Inside stuff. Then we'll head out for the historical park. The Wright Brothers Museum is out back. Ticket? You been here before? No. You're welcome. Thank you. This is um, our manufacturing and entrepreneurship building. We have a lot of businesses that. Are you from Dayton? No. Where are you from? Uh, Arizona. Oh, okay. This has various aspects of Dayton history and what have you. We have over 400 cash registers. <laughs> NCR used to be headquarter yeah. here and they yeah. donated over 300 cash registers here oh. that was developed by John by Charles Kettering when he worked for John Patterson and then Kettering eventually went on to make the self-starter huh and he did that in this building here which is a the barn behind which was the barn behind Colonel Deed who founded Carolina Park yeah so Colonel Deed and Charles Kettering invented the self-starter uh, ignition systems and a lighting system and they all just, and this is the original building. Wow. So they, this building was destroyed a couple other places. Well, that nice gentleman really knew this stuff. All about the cash registers. They even brought original buildings, cars, anything and everything dating. Even goes back to the gangster days. Art of Manufacturing, wow. Hey, Smokey the Bear. But I think this whole town is more about Wright Brothers. Look at this, more about lunar landing, Apollo, they made parts for it. That guy was talking about self-starters, I'm not sure what he was meaning. I'm sure it's something that's manufactured here. It's kind of dark in here, so if the camera gets a little jumpy, I apologize. And I bet, oh yeah, during the World Wars, this had to be a huge place for manufacturing. Ships ordered to port. Looks like the old time... Uh, Calculators and cash registers, old black and white screen computers. Oh, here you go. 
Here's some of the old time catch registers. You know, that is just artwork. The detail. The metal work and the detail. Them things look brand new, huh? National cash register. Now everything's done on a phone. <laughs> there they are working on it right there. Here you go, bootlegging and bandits and badges. Everyone had a steal during the prohibition days. Once again, just a different time. But they're saving history, good and bad. It's all history. Old baton for police. There's the jail cell. <laughs> but they had some characters uh, in Dayton during their days. Beautiful pictures. This place is extremely well done. If you get a chance, check it out. Carillon Park. Look at the shine on that thing. That thing looks brand new, too. Dayton, Ohio paddy wagon. Those guys look serious. Kind of hard to read in here, this stuff. I know the camera's jumping. Because of lighting. What the camera does, it's trying to autofocus all the time. Oh boy, look at the pistols. But it should brighten up on its own. Back in the day. Dayton Bank robbed. $16,000 back in the day. Police kill bank bandit. Wow. Okay. Here's another car. Look at the shine on that color. That just pops. Found a good home in this building. That is cool. Uh, an old bootlegging truck. Fake stack of wood where they hid their moonshine. 1919 Ford Model T. Mint condition. Oh my goodness, look at the carousel. That's what that guy was talking about up front. He rattled off so much information I couldn't keep up. <laughs> Don't tell him. Wow, look at this thing. That is beautiful. Even got a cash register for a seat. It's definitely got Dayton written all over it. Take a ride on the carousel. How fun. A little locomotive, and I think that's real. I think that thing runs. Huh. 
sure does. HK Porter mo locomotive. Then all the toys, they probably make that here in Dayton too. Yep, toys manufactured here. Ah, uh, to be a kid again, huh? Come to this place. Here you go. Now I know this is made here. Old time ice box. I'll be darn. Cooking stoves, frigid air. Made here in Dayton. <laughs> Incredible. Well, what do you say? Let's wander outside, go see that village. Those cash registers are just something to see. Pictures of them making them. And that one right there, there's your showpiece. What detail? Alright, now we got some light. That was a dark museum. Hard to film those. And we got flowers. Big garden. Some of the buildings here on the map. They date way back. They've been brought in, restored. This represents a little village here. The train is not working. I guess there's a little train that uh, you can ride around in. And that's closed. And they also said a couple of these buildings out here are being restored. Like that one over there with all the scaffolding. Big beautiful park. You know, it's humid here. I'm still not used to the humidity. I had some of that up in Michigan, but it's a lot more humid here. Back here somewhere is going to be the Wright Museum. Now where we came in, there was a big gift shop and uh, restaurant back there. You get something to eat, you could easily spend an entire day out here. Easily. That must light up at night. Aha, I see a sign. What's it say? Oh, there's a water wheel on the side of that building. That's a mill. I'll be darned. There you go. Back here should be the Wright Brothers. Yep. Sign for their museum. I'm anxious to see that plane. Pardon me? Are you? Arizona. Well, welcome. Thank you. This on this wall is all about their family. And there were actually seven children in the Wright Brothers family. And they had two older brothers, Rushlin, who went out to Kansas after high school and became a farmer, and Lauren, who stayed here, and he was sometimes a bookkeeper for the Wrights. And then we had Wilbur. And then there's a set of twins here that died in infancy. Then we had Orville, and Catherine was the youngest. 
and they shared the same birthday, and Catherine was the only one that went to college. How be doing? And she came uh, back to Dayton. She went to Oberlin College, came back here, and was a teacher and taught Latin in the high school. And their father, this is a young version, older version. He was a bishop in the United Brethren Trevo Printers. They were airplane and they were bicycle builders. And over here we have kind of some samples of their printing. And this was the time of period when if, when you go across the street, there's a printing printing place. Mm -hmm. And they would have one of those boxes where they'd have to put the individual letters in upside down and backwards. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the printing that they did. This gentleman's from Arizona. Oh. And they would glue it to wooden rims like this. Yeah. And so they're riding bicycles on, you know, gravel, dirt roads, no rim, wooden rims. So the Wrights also had a very lucrative bicycle repair business. Now there's five bicycles that the Wright brothers built that are left in the world, and we have two in this building. Those are not them. Well, I'm sure they're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the Dayton Sewing Machine Company saw what everybody was doing with bicycles, and they started building bicycles, and they became the Huffy Corporation and Huffy Bicycles. This is their, their office. Mm -hmm. The significance of the typewriter is that they, they knew Dayton didn't have enough back then. And notice again, the smooth, no tread tire, the wooden rim. And it looks very much like our bike. They, they worked on a coaster brake. And then notice the clips. Orville liked to race bicycles. And here are some medals that he won racing. And I always think that would be wonderful advertisement for their bicycle business. He's got these medals that he did. Wilbur preferred to ride in the countryside and he watched the birds and he was like, how do they do it? And the one thing that Wilbur noticed is that the ends of their wings would twist in opposite directions. And that's how he came up with wing warping. <laughs> Over here we have a bicycle that where they would repair bicycles. And just so you know that the bicycle business was what funded their airplane business. They took no money from the government, no money from uh, mentors or sponsors. They wanted to be solely in charge. And then this is their machine shop. <clears throat> And they built bicycles in here, and then they started building kites, and then gliders, and then eventually uh, their airplanes. And this is supposed to be Charlie Taylor, who was a machinist for them. And when it came time for the Wrights to, to need an engine, Charlie Taylor came up with it and built it for them. And they had asked the auto companies to do it, and they wouldn't do it because they wanted to build a bunch of them. They didn't want to do just one. And this is a wind tunnel. And have you heard of the German Otto Lilienthal? Mm -hmm. Okay. He's the one with the feathers. Okay, well, they discovered that his math was incorrect for lift and drag. So the Wrights built the wind tunnel. They did not invent it. And they put uh, 200 different airfoil shapes on this device. They put them on there, set it down, and then they would run the generator, propellers over here, and they'd watch out move for lift and drag. And they did 200 of them, but they decided number 12, which is this shape here, was the right shape for their wings. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. And then here, this is just a timeline of flight, and on the top are different people that maintained that they flew but they never had a sustained flight. They did more hops. And the bottom is just all the different things people have done to try to fly. Yeah, forever. Hmm. Whether it's rockets or... Well, this is the 1905. Era. There it is. And this is the one that they learned really how to fly. It, this, it was, this is a replica, right? No, this no? is 80% original. Is it? And... Um, Kitty Hawk, they did all of their experiments out here at Huffman Prairie. 
which is out by the Air Force Base, and they did it to save money and to save time. So when uh, Colonel Deeds, who made Carolyn Park, he was a friend of Oracle's, and he, and he was building this park, asked him if he had something that he could put in it having to do with flight, and Oracle tells him, yes, I can get you an airplane. But he had it pieces stored all over the place. Now you might want to come up with a front of him. And so Orville designed this room because he wanted people to be able to look down like you are doing, to see the plane and see the parts of it. <clears throat> but Orville died before it was completed. Wilbur died in 1912 of typhoid fever. Orville died in 1948. He had a heart attack. And because we were here in Dayton, see this rail down here? Mm -hmm. They used a catapult system to launch it. And they would attach a, a rope to it. And the, cat, the catapults had a 1,600-pound weight that they would drop. And it would shoot the plane into the air. And then see the stream over his head? Yeah. All right, when it came time to land, he would lift his head. That cut the engine, which is the black thing there. And it came in like a glider. And notice there's no wheels. It's got skids, kind of like it. And they're in a cow pasture. Huh. And a lot of people want to know how high did they fly. And they were, they were about the trees. They weren't at their height, they were at their distance. And to fly it, see the lever is right now? That controlled the rudder in the back. The left hand controls this elevator in the front. And then when I talked about wing warping, mm -hmm. okay, see it's, he's on a hip cradle, he's laying down. When it came time to, to adjust the ends of the wings, he would wiggle his hips, and that would twist the ends of the wings to do the wing warping. Spruce, a lot of it is spruce wood, because it's lightweight and strong. Here's their patent. It's called for a flying machine. This is a replica, of course and it cost them seven dollars. And then look at this up here. This is a 1911 plane, and the Wrights wanted to make money, okay? So the most logical people that would be interested in buying a plane would be the Army or the military. So the Army wanted it to hold two people. You notice it has wheels, this one has wheels. Uh -huh. And notice that the, the elevator is missing, it's in the back. This is a 1911 version. They improved it. Yep. And then look at the canoe up above. Oh, yeah. They were concerned about flying over water. So they took a canoe, covered it in canvas, and in the event that they would have to go down over a lake or a river, it would be a pontoon. And see this picture over here? See the Statue of Liberty? Yeah. It's got that canoe. And that's an air show in 1909. <clears throat> And this is their success house, okay? Then Wilbur never lived in it. They started building it in 1912, and he had died. And Orville and her, his father and sister lived in that, and that's in Oakwood here in town. This is their factory. They had a flight school. They t uh, had um, built seaplanes. Well, cool. We got the grand tour from that nice lady. What a world of information. Look at this uh, tuxedo that he wore. And they still kept it. We can actually go back. I want to take another look at that plane. We can walk. She said we can go back, get more pictures. But what an amazing feat these guys did hauled it clear down to North Carolina because she said there's no winds here in Dayton that would support it there they're flying around the Eiffel Tower <laughs> once they started man they're flying everywhere wood and cloth wings goodness and their patent Here you go. This is kind of a once-in-a-lifetime thing. I mean, she said it was 80% original. They had three planes. And this is one of them. 
eighty percent and they even designed the room around it so people could do what we're doing right now that's total history he died young huh not too long after they flew the plane the other brother kept it going Well, what's the old saying? Too cool for school? <laughs> this is very cool. Okay, I'm going to try something. I know the GoPro. It's kind of dark in here. I'm going to try my phone and see if I can't get a little better shot of the plane here. There you go. Now you can see it better. There you go. 1905. Single engine. No seat. You just lay on the wing. <laughs> Way you go. History was made right there. their bike shop. Well, there's more buildings across the way here. We'll check those on the way out of here. They really documented this pretty well with all the photos, everything. And those are modern tools back in the day. Well, what do you say? You want to head outside? Here we go. Wow, that's bright. <laughs> There's your difference. Looks like they're doing some pretty major work down there in their roads. Well, pretty darn cool. I wasn't expecting all this. I didn't know what it was going to be. You know, you read about this stuff, there's a lot of... YouTube videos on this right all oh. but the history with the bikes how they supported it themselves seven bucks for a patent pretty amazing What do we got? Cars. The Dayton Sales Company. And they got some old timers in there, it looks like. Here you go. 1908 Stoddard. Look at the size of this thing. It's a big vehicle. My goodness. 1910. Scooters. Made in Dayton. Oh, that's a Ford there. Well, they probably made them here too. <laughs> Old tires. Very well done. If you get in this neck of the woods here around Dayton, definitely make this uh, part of your bucket list.
they even had the old sales offices with little cash registers in them. Come on in, I'll sell you a car. Those tires and wheels are huge. That's wood, too. Ha. Huh. And there's your Hatfield, 1908. Boy, I bet that's a rough riding thing. <laughs> Back then, where they have dirt roads. Definitely is like a little mini town all set up. What do we have in here? Steam engine, 1902, generated electricity. Well, let's check her out. Whoa! Thing is huge. Modern technology back then. Just this building alone, I mean, uh, serious uh, reconstruction here. Look at the roof in this thing. Pretty new. Smells new in here. Big old gauges. But that thing made some noise when it was all fired up and going. <laughs> cool. And next building. They're just lined up right here. Sugar Camp. Cabin number 22. And what do we have? Women in the wartime. Posters. The waves. Well, you know, women, they were test pilots during World War II. You know, even Quartzsite has history of that. So they had an airstrip there. Pretty cool. They're saving history. And what's this one? Looks like an old house. All these, they probably hauled them in from who knows where. Deeds Barn. Okay. That looks very new. Now this one has the four pillars. Newcomb House. Now that's cool. For as small as it is with them big pillars. Let's peek inside. Now that couch can't be comfortable. 
A lot of that old antique furniture isn't. Grandfather clock. That mirror seen it someday, but that is some really cool stained color glass on it. The old kitchen. Well done. Smell fire going. Someone's got a campfire going. I think it's in here. William Morris House. Let's check out William Morris. Fire. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, making some applesauce. Um, yeah, this belonged to a, a farming family. They had 20 acres of farmland uh, in the Centerville area. This house was built in 1815. And um, there were four to five people living in this house. Original house, really? Yep. Mm -hmm. It was moved here from the Centerville area. And uh, this room was divided into three rooms with walls. Uh, we took down the walls when it was when it was moved here, but they had a bedroom on that side, a bedroom on that side. And um, you can see where one of the walls once stood, notched out, and the beams there is where the wall once stood. And the other wall went from door to door. And um, the chimney housed two separate flues so that each side could control their own heat. So um, all the other daily living activities happened over here, and the stairs there go up to the loft, which they used mostly for storage. Wow. Um, the hole was just cut out by the park so that people could see up there. Well, on a cool day, you got the best seat in the house. Yes, that's true. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh huh. There you go. Have a fire. Make some applesauce. Back in the day. This place is so well done. When I was looking at it online, it, I didn't realize it was this big and this nice. Hey, does anyone know what time it is? <laughs> it's half past the second leaf on the tree. <laughs> wow. That's cool. Can't really read what it says. It's old anyway. Pretty darn cool. Looks like they're really working on this one on the siding, new roof. Preserving history, that's a good thing. And that's the Newcomb Tavern. Very glad I came here. Good first stop getting back on the road after a three week delay. Still can't believe that happened. Oh well. Back at it now.
Well, here we go. I spent a lot of more time here than I thought I would. But you know what? We gotta check out that other museum before we leave town. This video is getting a little long. Uh, next video will be at that Air Force Museum. It's on the other side of town. Matter of fact, I'll drive through downtown a little bit to get there. Check out Dayton. Then immediately tonight, I'm heading straight down towards uh, Ohio River. Already found an RV park down there, close to stay in. And we're going to check out some really cool towns. Right there in the Ohio River in West Virginia. Why not? Journey continues. Never ends. Talk soon.